Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and SkilledWorker.com. Canada has recently announced its three-year immigration levels. So it's going to be raising its annual level of immigrants up to 350,000. The current level is 300,000. So this will be on a managed gradual basis and it's going to cover all programs. So for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to be discussing these new levels. So Colin, what are the highlights of the government's new three-year plan? I think you, you uh, raised the the description was quite uh, accurate. And, and I think the takeaway from all of this is it's managed immigration increases. So we are looking at a current uh, annual uh, increase, an annual immigration level of 300,000. It's been that way for the last two years. Uh, but what the government plans to do is over a three year period go to 350,000. Again, it's, it's very managed increases across a broad range. So we're going to see. Uh, in terms of the volume of people coming in, most of the increases are going to be in the economic class. So Canada pr currently brings in about 175,000 what's called economic immigrants, uh, and the government plans to increase those numbers from current levels of 177,000 uh, next year, 2019, to about 192,000. And you're going to see slight increases in this broad stream of category uh, to about 195, 196,000. And in three years from now, our current levels of 177 will go to 202,000. Again, the, that's the economic class. You're also going to see uh, increases uh, in the family class, very marginal increases, but nonetheless, some increases. You're going to see increases in the refugee stream. Uh, current levels are in the range of 44,000. Next year, the government calls for about 46,000. And within a three-year period, the entire refugee stream is about 52,000. So you're seeing increases, uh, and the numbers seem overall substantial when you look at 50,000 as a whole over three years. But there's a number of factors that are uh, leading this government to wanting to increase the numbers. But again, the most important concept is managed increases, careful, so that the infrastructure can accommodate those numbers. Uh, and and that, those, are the, those are the overall numbers. So what does this mean for families then with the levels? So you do have an opportunity to, to bring in a sponsored uh, family member. Uh, in, in one sense, you're going to be able to see the government is uh, not shirking its, rep its obligations towards families. You're going to see uh, overall uh, a, a modest increase. I mean, from 88,000 to about 91,000. You're not seeing a lot of increase, uh, but you're going to see uh, what we call very moderate increases. And unfortunately, across the board, what you're going to see when you are bringing in a sponsored member, you're probably going to see an increase, in, unfortunately, in processing times. Uh, it's typical that the increased volume is not just unique to immigrants on the permanent side. You're seeing increased volumes on a whole range of things. On the temporary foreign worker, you're seeing increases on the uh, study streams. So overall, the entire system is being tested uh, and it's being called upon to deliver. Uh, and unfortunately for families, you probably are going to see processing times that are not going to come down, let's just say that. Uh, it's unlikely that they're going to decrease and families are going to have to uh, understand that processing for a, a sponsorship application is probably going to continue to be in the range of about a year and a year and a half. So unfortunately, increased numbers do not necessarily translate into bringing people faster to Canada. Okay. So then what would it mean for candidates? If you're a candidate, uh, obviously you want to look at the, the, the positive news is that the numbers are increasing. Uh, you're going to see uh, opportunities under the provincial nomination streams. You're going to see increased opportunities this year, 2018, 55,000 in the provincial streams, not including Quebec. Uh, Quebec by itself brings in economic immigrants about 30,000 this year. You're going to see next year in the provincial streams going up to 61. Uh, Quebec probably won't change. It might even decrease according to the new policies that this recently elected government uh, has come out with. Uh, so you're going to see opportunities to uh, perhaps look at permanency for uh, an individual from overseas. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't mean that it's getting easier. It's certainly not easy to come to Canada. So if you're looking to come to Canada, yes, there's a wonderful uh, impression that uh, Canada is open, the numbers are increasing, but it's very uh, strategic on the part of this government. And, and the fact remains, it's not anybody that's coming in. It's very highly qualified individuals. And for many individuals, unfortunately, you're going to need to have an employer in hand. Uh, that's the reality. So uh, if you're looking to have uh, Canada as a destination on a permanent side, you have to understand that you need to have the right qualifications. Okay, so you mentioned employers. So what do the levels mean for employers then? For employers, it's very encouraging that you will have an opportunity to bring in individuals on a permanent basis. From an employer's perspective, that's a retention tool. That allows you to go out and recruit a candidate. For many employers, the challenge of finding top talent is ongoing. You have a very historic, we're nearing, <clears throat> excuse me, decades low uh, on unemployment rates. And that's translating into challenges for Canadian employers in bringing top talent. When you're looking to the foreign market, it's important as an employer that being in a recruiting position will allow you to retain candidates for permanency. So there is more opportunity to bring candidates to, the, to, to your uh, labor force, but unfortunately, uh, processing times on the temporary side of things is really a, a, going to be an ongoing challenge. So as an employer looks to recruit, which is what the current policies promote, you're going to be challenged by getting candidates to Canada quickly. Uh, once you do get them to Canada, you will be able to retain them on a permanent level. Okay, so Canada has seen nearly 20,000 asylum seekers come to Canada from the United States and they're claiming you know, each year and obviously they're making refugee claims. What is the, obviously there's been an, has there been an impact on Canada? What is this impact? It's very controversial that, in on the one hand, this government, which came into power two years ago this fall, uh, they, their, one of their important platforms was uh, an immigration component. You know, at that time, of course, there were a lot of Syrian refugees who were drawing the uh, media attention, and there were, was, in fact, a, a, a tremendous humanitarian uh, challenge that was unfolding in Syria. Uh, Canada uh, at that time had promoted bringing in 25,000 Syrian refugees. Uh, so, and and the government was successful in getting elected, uh, in part on one on that particular platform. Uh, Canadians had an appetite from a humanitarian perspective in welcoming Syrian refugees at that time. What's happened, however, is over the past two years, we have what's called an irregular uh, refugee. Uh, challenge, and that is a lot of individuals who have obtained visitor visas to the United States have d worked upon getting into Canada through an irregular border crossing. This has led to many uh, refugee claims that are being adjudicated. 95% plus of, that, of these types of claims are rejected. So what's happening is there's this perception that the Canadian government uh, needs to get a, a handle on the refugee stream that is uh, affecting our annual uh, numbers. There are individuals coming in on a monthly basis. Some months it's 1,500, 1,800. Most of them are coming through the Quebec border. What is, this is doing is it's creating an optical uh, challenge for the current government that we don't have control of our borders. As you can recall, this is one of the uh, populist uh, platforms that the American uh, president, currently Donald Trump, is using to uh, convey a need to uh, be tougher on its borders. And it's having an effect uh, in many ways on his popularity in a, in, in a sense that he's, he's quite popular with some groups. This type of issue is, it could face Canada in that uh, a, an illegal and irregular refugee stream uh, coming into Canada if our current government does not get a handle on it, it could, in fact, in one year from now, when the next federal elections are coming, this could be an issue that could come back and harm the current government. So it's really important that individuals, uh, the, 
Canadians. It's true we have a flow of, of refugees, but bear in mind, Canada is planning to accept 44,000 refugees next year, the year after. So uh, the stream of individuals coming into Canada, unfortunately, is troubling because these are individuals who are not making claims uh, in the normal channels. Uh, there are options for the Canadian government uh, to uh, address this flow of, of, Syria, of, of illegal refugee claimants. Uh, it's a question of whether they're going to make political decisions that could come back and uh, harm them as well. So it's important that the government gets a handle on this, uh, what we call refugee stream. Uh, but bear in mind, Canada is very welcoming and plans to bring in 45,000 refugees per year in each of the next three years. Okay, great. So uh, should we move on to how we can assist? Sure, them? let's, let's uh, just cover if you're a candidate coming to Canada, uh, what you what you might want to look at in terms of uh, the strategy we might be able to help you with. Okay, so on our website we have the minimum criteria, but with all our clients we provide the immigration as well as employment search assistance. So we'll provide you with a database of at least 500 potential hiring employers in your field and the provinces of your choice. We also provide you with a Canadian style resume cover letter and as well as other tools and we also do assist if one wants assistance with LinkedIn. We have an interesting program it's been very very successful for us over the past six months and it's called a live LinkedIn tutorial face-to-face -face, 60 minutes one-on-one -on -one, with our very experienced employment advisors having an understanding on the power of LinkedIn how to use LinkedIn in finding employers outlying areas uh, creating job alerts. There's a number of very powerful uh, tools within the LinkedIn platform that uh, a, 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 a person who's in the know uh, can help. Uh, and really, if you if you learn the, the the intricacies of what LinkedIn can do, can be very very beneficial in your job search. For example, if you're coming to Canada or wherever you might want to ultimately uh, become employed. So. Our LinkedIn tutorials have become a very interesting part of the service package that we offer our individual clients for those who want it. So that's for candidates. What about employers? If you're an employer and you need uh, to recruit uh, for individuals overseas, our uh, grnmontreal.com uh, as well as our skilledworker.com, both of these are in-house standalone recruitment enterprises we have a good understanding of bringing in foreign workers. So if you are an employer and you need uh, some assistance, we're very well suited to going out and putting together a recruitment project that will help you identify uh, top talent from overseas. In addition to that, of course, we've got a, a certain uh, understanding, of course, on the immigration side. So you're well served uh, in terms of being an employer in either recruiting or if you have the recruiting under control, we surely would be in a position to help you with the immigration formalities. Perfect. So if you're a candidate and you want to find out if you qualify, please go to www.immigration.ca and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with your options. And if you're an employer, please go to the Contact Us section of our website. As always, please do like us and follow us on our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And we'll keep you posted on the when the next live stream will be. Great. So. That covers our, our session for this morning. Hope you found it informative. Uh, have a great day and see you soon. Thank you very much for joining.